So I wanted to show you a really cool trick today, and it's about recording drums with a single mic. I was talking with an old friend of mine, and he actually said, you know, Ryan, sometimes I don't even have a, a mic stand. I just go in there, I just hold the mic, and I play a beat, and I just, I just hold the mic, uh, just kind of over the drums, you know? It's not even worth it setting up a stand. I just have an idea. I just want to get something out. And I'm literally holding the mic. So I kind of realized that not everybody is out there trying to get this amazing drum sound. But we need a simple and practical way to record drums. We don't need something that is going to rip your face off with the kick drum necessarily. But we need something very easy and very simple to set up. What I have for you today is something that I recorded with a single SM57, and I used a free plugin, the um, SK10, which is like a subkick emulation type thing. And with that, and maybe a little bit of compression, I'll show you how you can make this work and how you can make it sound actually really good. So here's a little on how it sounds. Okay, so at this point here, this is the only microphone that we have in this drum track here. It's the only thing that we're using. It's actually totally raw. That is the raw sound. And why this works so well is because we have, the microphone is uh, kind of low enough that we have a view of the kick drum here. We also have a proximity to the snare, proximity to the low tom. And when I say proximity, I'm not saying that you're that we're getting proximity effect here. You're not going to hear that. Um, that really only comes into play in the last kind of few inches as you approach a microphone. This is just the balance of various elements on the drum kit. And we are able to balance the different elements by getting closer to them. If we want them louder, then we get closer to the elements. So the floor tom is usually kind of quiet. The high tom is usually kind of loud. So we're actually kind of far away from the high tom. And we're actually kind of far away from the hi-hat. And so we're actually naturally balancing out the kit this way. It's over the drummer's right shoulder. And we have lots of snare, lots of kick, lots of floor tom. See how this works? So the biggest issue is how to really beef this up. And we could use any mic, really. As long as it's not too extreme of like a crazy like top-end boost, too harsh on that top-end, any sort of kind of flat, kind of bland-sounding microphone is actually a very mixable microphone because we can actually turn and really make this um, kind of go crazy in the mix. Because we're only using one microphone here and there's no phase issues to really worry about. We can we can go crazy with the EQ if you want. We can go kind of nuts with the compression. We're not gonna actually mess up anything. It'll sound really creative and really quite cool. So back to this SM57 here, um, we have it over the kit, naturally balancing out everything out. Um, then what we could do is send it to an effect that is basically just adding some low in. And so this is, um, uh, who makes this? I'll put it in the description below, but it's the SK-10 Subkick Simulator. It's a free plugin. Uh, and yeah, this thing, it sounds great. Let's, um, let's see here, what did I do here? I have a couple different ways you could insert this. Um, the first way is I just sent it to an effects channel here. And the second way 
I actually just duplicated the SM57 track. So I duplicated it and pulled it down to its own separate track. And then I just applied the plugin. So without anything on, all it is is the SM57 track. That's all that is, SM57 track. Then I did some EQ, a little bit more boost just to, um, uh, I'll talk about that in a moment because it has to do with the cutoff frequency. Um, and that's right here. Uh, then we have the SK-10, which gives us that low end. Yeah, so that really is just a low end filter um, to give us that low end. We could probably just make this on our own too. I mean, there's there's nothing really stopping us. I've done this many times before where if you want to do a single mic drum kind of mix, you can duplicate your microphone, whatever that may be, crotch mic, over the shoulder mic like we have here, whatever. And then we can process just the lows, you know, and do separate stuff for that. But for this, uh, I'm using this, S this SK-10 because I'm like, you know what, it'd be cool to have a free plugin um, really kind of making this technique work. Then I do have the arouser. Um, this is just to add some attack. So as you see here, it's like a really slow seven millisecond attack. Hear that? It's kind of making like a, kind of like a ooh, ooh, like it's, it's kind of getting through, but then it's kind of grabbing it. Okay, that's what I'm listening for. You might hear it higher, more, uh, higher ratios. Okay, and it's it's subtle, you know. It's not crazy night and day, but it's subtle and it's there, and that's key because you don't want to just make your transformation all in one kind of trick, you know. You want to use multiple kind of techniques, layer them in to get your final sound. So that's just the low end. So let's add this in, and I'll show you how it blends. I'll talk a little bit about this phase relationship here. So that is just one microphone, okay? I mean, I don't know if you could use this in your studio, but this is this is really useful, I think, okay? If you just need some way to record drums, separate out the lows, process them differently so you can kind of amp them up a little bit, but this is a great trick, okay? Drummer over the shoulder mic. So what's going on with this phase flip here? Okay. so. This is interesting, and this is not something that I've even thought about until recently, like 20 years into my journey of home recording, 20, 24 years into my recording of, of, into my journey of recording here. If you have drums that are pushing down first with the drum head, the stick goes down, it pushes down on the drum head, and the drum head comes back. If you have a microphone that's looking down, the microphone diaphragm is actually getting sucked out first, and then it's going back in towards the body of the mic. 
And this is different than how speakers work. Speakers work by pushing air out first. That's how it should work, at least. Uh, you have the low end of a kick. You want it to push out first. And so uh, with this in mind, if we look at this waveform, look at that. It goes down first and then up. See, down first and then up. And that's, that's why. It's because the microphone is above the drums looking down. If we had a kick mic, then technically that would be correct because the kick would be pushing air into the mic. Uh, the mic would generate uh, a signal based on, you know, being pushed in. It's going to make a positive voltage Okay, positive polarity, uh, and then it's going to make our speakers push out. But with this, the wave goes down. So it makes you wonder, should we always be flipping mics that are so-called chasing the wave? You know, if something's not facing towards it and the source is actually facing away from the microphone and the microphone's looking the same direction, snare, toms, overheads, should we flip the polarity? Because it's the drums are being pushed down into the floor and the microphone is above it or behind it chasing that wave. Okay, that's not something I realized until lately. And I'm like, yeah, I think that works. That makes sense. Especially with this, how we have a single mic source and it's already, it's already kind of flipped. Okay, it's not out of phase, but it's just the wrong polarity. You see? And that's the difference. Phase is a timing thing. Polarity is up or down. That's what we're dealing with here. So that's why I flipped the polarity here. That's what this is called. This is not called phase, by the way. It's flip polarity. Phase would be actually going in here and adjusting the timing of the track by, you know, 0.1 millisecond. That would mess with your phase. If you want to do that, go for it. But really, you shouldn't have to, okay? If you get your fundamentals right, you should be able to just get polarity and get a lot done, okay, with mic technique. So, um, so yeah, that's the basic technique. Single mic, SK-10, or some sort of low end, low pass, just treat the lows. Now, if we wanna bump this up a notch, what we can do is take another uh, couple of mics, 57, 57, and we can just put them on a stool. Let me go find that example. Here we go. And put them on a stool and just face them out, kind of in like an ORTF situation, but it's not measured. It's not even on a piece of uh, fabric or anything. I'm just putting them on a stool, hoping they don't roll off, and see what we get. So let's find my room tracks and see, how see what that sounds like. Yeah, so you you really don't even need stereo drums because, like, in the past I've talked about mono overhead and stereo room, and that's actually not a bad option because mono overhead still works. It simplifies things. If you have a stereo room and it sounds decent, you can always pan your toms, right? And it'll sound stereo. Like, this with a mono drum mic, single mic drum, and a stereo pair for the room, this really works well. I mean, it sounds great. I'm not panning the toms because I can't. There's nothing else to really work with, right? It's just a single mic and stereo room, and it sounds great. So that's kind of step number two, or level number two. Now, level number three would be uh, back a little bit. So here, I just have the one mic, and there's nothing behind this kick drum. And then I add a, a microphone here. This is just a, uh, a Lewitt uh, dynamic mic. I'm trying to see what, what the actual track, uh, what the actual mic is called. 
It's a 440, kind of SM57 looking type microphone. But check this out. The, the, the biggest issue is we don't have that attack out of the kick drum, and this solves that. You see how many different flavors I can get just with a few basic adjustments? I mean, the main kind of key mic is the SM57 over the drummer's right shoulder. But then I can add in some attack and some bottom snare with that kind of behind the kick mic. And then I can add in some stereoization by the room mics, the stereo pair room mics, which is just a pair of SM57s. Okay, this does not have to be hard. And this really goes back into the organic recording method that I'm really starting to lean into and teach from. You see, everything has to do with really getting the sound at the source. So for instance, like, you know, record like you can't mix and really get the sound at the source. If it needs to be uh, like a drum tuning issue, it's going to be way easier to fix that issue at the drum tuning stage, at the tech stage. And then if it's a balancing issue, then change the mic position. So, you know, record like you can't mix, mix like you can't master. You, you always want to be working your problems basically upstream before you have to deal with it later. Don't deal with it later deal with it now. Fix the problem at the mic. Okay, so that is, uh, yeah, kind of my uh, cool, fresh new technique for simplified minimalist drum uh, recording and mixing. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think.